We are live. All right, all right. Shout out to Most Deaf for that. All right, E, what's happening, brother? Welcome back. Welcome back and good morning, family. Uh, welcome to the Money Sex Gen X podcast, episode number four. Let's talk about sex. Uh, it's me, your host with the most, the man with the plan, the guy that made him cry, Mr. Eric McLeod. And I am not alone. I am here with my co captain, my co host. Big Stu. What's going on, Big Stu? Hey, what's happening, E, man? Glad to be here for another week. Money, yeah, sex, man. Gen X. No doubt. I'm glad to be here, too. How's your week been going? Pretty good, man. Pretty good. Busy, man. Busy, man. I never thought I'd be this, this busy when I had to be at home, but I think it's a good thing. So it's been good. Very productive, man. How about you? How's your week been? Same here, man. Just hard at work. You know, definitely didn't expect to be indoors this long, but, um, you know, making it do what it do and trying to maintain. So uh, I'm all good. I'm all good. Yeah, here we got another 30 days stay at home order. Yes. Extended through May 30th. Yeah, we got at least another 30 days, unfortunately. At least. At least. Yeah, that's just the 30 days we know about. So, well, yeah. I got inside scoop that... Um, we will be um that there is definitely another 30 days coming after um after the may side, after may after may we are not getting off until at least june 30th wow that's my inside connects um there's no way that the city or the state could announce a two month stay at home order without inciting some sort of panic and riot. Okay. So they're piecemealing our stay at home order. But uh, I was just asking you, had you seen the video footage from last night um, of, with all of these young people here in Chicago partying? No, I did not see that. I, um, I was a little bit shocked. And then I thought about him like, well, I am shocked, but you know, what would I have done if I was their age? Would I have stayed in the, in the house like a good little boy or, you know, I don't know. So, you know, I don't want to cast judgment, but yeah, it was shocking. I haven't seen the video yet, but I want to check it out. Yes, yeah, it's got a lot of, um, it's got a lot of people up in arms about it, man. It's got a lot of people up in arms. Uh, I wondered if it was the epitome of the the, the uh, divide, uh, generational divide. Young people and old people, all the old people at home will not leave the house unless necessary. And it's literally all of these young people, like, not my words, their words, literally saying, fuck the virus. We out here in wow. these streets. Scary, scary stuff. Very scary. It yeah, is. I mean, is it mostly the, the older people that are complaining? Yeah, it looks like it was mostly, uh, I'm sorry, it looks like it was mostly the adults of the world that were like, look at these fools, they're going to die. Yeah. They <laughs> but they weren't practicing social distancing. There was a lot of people in this uh, uh apartment house or whatever a lot they were drinking they were smoking they were dancing uh, some people had on masks most of the people didn't uh i found it highly entertaining uh to say the least i was torn between you know yolo and recklessness you know civil recklessness i was torn between the two yeah, YOLO and NOLO. <laughs> YOLO Basically. versus NOLO. And yeah, I mean, it's, it's, a tough, it's a tough situation, man. Everybody out there, if, you, if you're younger, you know, we, like we always say, we're not casting any judgment on you. 
We just want everybody to be safe and be around when everybody can go back outside. We want everybody to be here so that they can do so. But, you know, ultimately, unfortunately, people are going to do what they want to do. And you know what? That ties into our topic for today. Let's talk about sex because talk about sex, baby. Number one thing I want to get into with you today is when you were younger, mm. what were your views about sex and how have they possibly changed over the years? Did they change? Oh, you know, tough subject, man. I don't know why we're there's such a taboo subject. We don't talk about it a lot, uh, particularly out in the open. I'm a late bloomer, bro. I'm classic Gen Xer. Uh, I was 18 before I broke my virginity. Okay. It did not happen the way that I uh, imagined that it would. It came with a lot of pressure from the guys in the neighborhood. Mm -hmm. um, so, yes, my views on have changed over the years, of course. Uh, but I still hold on to a lot of old school traditions and traditional values around sex and responsible sex, being responsible. Okay. So. Now, I did a little bit, of, you know, I like to come with some numbers, right? So I did a little bit of digging. And one thing that I saw as a recurring theme is, according to the media and supposed people that they poll, Generation X is the most promiscuous Really? Of all the other groups, definitely outpacing millennials when it comes to promiscuity. Also baby boomers, from what I understand. And I thought that was interesting. And I think from what I'm understanding, not only were we the most promiscuous when we were younger, but even currently, as I understand it. And we have definitely, according to the data, have had more partners and have had sex more often. And I thought about this. I thought about, you know, we always talk about hip hop. So I think back to a couple of songs that I remember. I used to be a big, still am, big Tribe Called Quest uh, fan. They had this song called Hot Sex on a Platter. Hot Sex on a Platter, you remember yeah. Remember that? Hot Sex yeah. on a Platter, boom, boom. They <laughs> had um, Flex Time to Have Sex yeah. by Mad Cobra. Shout out to him. We had uh, pink cookies in a plastic bag. Remember wow. that by LL? Wow. And then we had um, the obvious one. We had salt and pepper. Let's talk about sex. Let's talk about sex, baby. Me. Talk about you me. and me. me. Yeah. So, so we had those. You know, I had to kind of think about it. But in the mix of all the other hip hop culture that we were in, we definitely had these conversations weaved in there a little bit about, as far as music, about sex. As we were coming up, yeah, and you know, OPP, you know. Oh um, man, I forgot about the yeah, OPP. Other uh, people probably naughty by nature. Naughty by nature. Going back to last week's episode when we looked at uh, school days, uh, the butt. Oh yeah, butt. but yeah, you know. Yeah. So you're right. Um, sex, sex, sex was an important, you know. Uh, Act and conversation that we definitely addressed in hip hop. Um, yeah, I, my mom sat down and had an official talk with me. I remember, you know, her having condoms and uh, banana mm. at the kitchen table. That's how you do it. <laughs> like, get the air out, make, you know, like, now you do it. You know yeah. what I mean? Um, yeah, man. I mean, we we going yeah, we was about that. We was about getting peace, man. Definitely, definitely. It was for you know a lot of masculinity around that man, getting some ass, man, you know, for sure, for sure. Yeah. Yeah, it was it was definitely something that was top of mind for everybody. I I, I went back and thought about what were my actual views about sex. I don't I don't know if I had a necessarily a viewpoint, but now looking back, I feel like it was more of a sport. Damn. At the time, it was it was like it was an activity. I mean, wow. obviously it's an activity, but it was just like um, the casualness of it. 
was kind of sporting. I, I would. I would well, say. are you talking about the sport of how many? You know, like how many bodies you could catch? Like catching bodies? Like how many numbers? The numbers or the sport of performance with the one you were with? Yeah, a little bit of both, Scott. The the number and also the performance, but also kind of the casualness of it. You know, it's like. When you play sports, you could be on the court with somebody and you all playing the game, but you're not really cool with that person. You know what I mean? Think about this. So we got this, um, the last dance that's coming out about the Bulls, you know, their yeah. last seasons or whatever. This first two, I watched the first two, but this season they're going to really talk about Dennis Rodman, I heard. And I read several times that he was saying that him and Michael Jordan had zero relationship off that's the court. Right. That's right. Him, Michael, and Scotty. Yeah, they didn't. Yeah. Yeah. No, they didn't rock at all. So yeah. we're laying it back. It's like back then, I feel like you could have sex with someone, but you had there was no there was no real relationship there. It was just something that was done, and then you keep it moving. You know, I remember, I remember a time in college. So remember, so mind you, I I lost my virginity in the spring of '89. Hmm. That was my graduating year and uh, of high school. And then I, I think, you know, going off to college, uh, definitely culture shocks in all of those uh, women in one place. It was just like, what is happening? Right. Like I probably was the classic goofy freshman talking, trying to talk to everything that passed. And it, but I remember Either somebody, I think an older cat told me, it was like, look, you got to chill out, bro. Like, you'll, you'll, you'll do, you'll fare better by just chilling. Just chill, man. Don't, don't talk, don't try to talk to every girl. Don't try to pull on every, every girl's elbow or arm or. Oh, you were doing that? I, I'm sure, man. I'm sure. I got to college and thought, I, yeah. Okay. But it didn't, it didn't, it didn't help my game. I think what helped was really just like kind of falling back and just being cool and um, almost to a point of acting like they didn't exist. Like, ah, it ain't that important. And then that's when, you know, I had a few more experiences in college. But I remember trying to have some numbers, but that didn't work out. It, it became, I fell into uh, quite the opposite of what you're talking about, man. I, let me get to know them. Let me, let me. Let me be the guy that's not just trying to bag bodies out here. Yeah, yeah. You know? That's interesting. So my numbers were, I think, compared to a lot of my college buddies, and I'm not going to say any names, you know who you are, my numbers were low. Low, brother. I got low numbers out here. Okay. Low. Wow. Compared to. So maybe compared to these other Gen Xers that they're talking about out here who were promiscuous. So when I think of somebody being promiscuous, I don't think about it in like the final act only necessarily. I think about everything leading up to it, the kissing, you know, the fondling, whatever, all of it, just being active. Were you active and just not, you know, the final stage didn't happen, but you were out there active or how did that look? Quality over quantity every time, dog. You okay. know what I mean for me. So um I probably could have been, but I wasn't here for it. Like I wasn't like I'm so like I know I'm the guy. Like I go around a lot of my college college folks now, and I don't have I'm not the I'm not the awkward one in the room that's like, oh, I bagged her, I bagged her, I bagged her. And nope, nope, no. Nope. I don't have any of those. I have none of those stories. None of them. I can go, I can go around my college people right now. And ain't no stories about like five or six women in the room that I'd have had intercourse with. I don't have that. I don't have that. Okay. My shit is low key, you know, off the radar. It's hard to catch me up. I ain't so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nah, man, I wasn't that dude. I wasn't. I wasn't the dude for sport, man. Nah, man, I was chilling, chilling. Chilling. Good. So now, I have good. my experiences now, but quality yeah, and quantity. Okay. So my experience was 
you know, where I was at at the time when I was young, there was a lot of aggressive young ladies, you know, girls, young ladies, for lack of a better word, but they were very aggressive. And I know I felt like they had more interest than I did probably initially. Not probably, they did. They were coming, they were coming at me hard. You know, even some of them would go to my parents and be like, you know, I want to talk to your son or whatever. Really? And yeah, I remember when I was playing basketball in middle school at practice, my dad, this is the first time my parents came to me with it. My dad came up to me, he was like, yo, homegirl, I'm not gonna say her name, she wants to talk to you. And I'm looking at him like, yo, what are you talking about? You know what I mean? Like, I was embarrassed, I was frustrated, uh, the whole thing, you know? And I didn't know that the young lady liked me or whatever, but I was like, why is this man talking to me about this? Uh, you know he was like, yo, he was looking at me like, what you gonna do? You know what I mean? Like he's looking for an action plan. And I'm like, I'm I'm totally not there yet. So I had a I had a lot of that. So, you know, and I don't know, I can't say she really, really liked me. I don't know what she was really trying to do, but it was definitely like I felt a lot of pressure. Even in college, like I felt a lot, those the women that I was around, the young ladies, they were very, very aggressive. Like they would initiate conversations, they would initiate these scenarios. And I kind of was late to kind of understanding like what was going on. You know, they were flirting and I didn't even know that it was flirting. You know what I mean? It's like, wow. Like, and then I look back on it now, it's funny. But I, I was definitely under the gun. So, you know, that was kind of my entry into it. And, and I definitely did view it as a very impersonal thing because it wasn't, a, like we talked about last week, there wasn't a lot of... Um, solid dialogue about what are you going to do with your life and should we right, right, right. Like boom boom you know and just keep it moving you know and that's that's kind of how i viewed it now now let's talk about this middle school basketball uh like what kind of do were you so when did you lose your virginity i was a late bloomer too i was around 18 yeah. i was around 18 i may have even been 19 okay. i was i was very late under under pressure, but late to actually go through with the full act. I was doing all the stuff leading up to it, but I was I was a late bloomer for sure. And um, um, I remember in middle school, man. I think the thing, the thing for uh, for us, the the big score for us in middle school. If you could, if you could, if you can suck on some breasts, if you could. Uh, you know, if you if you if you can get your fingers involved, yeah, you were the man. Now we, you know, I only I only I didn't even have a lot of those. Maybe one or two of those in that middle school days. Like that was still like some far away stuff. You know what I mean? Like yeah. that was heavy duty stuff. Right. But did you were you aware? Were you were you did you have a girlfriend? Were you aware? At that that time, that middle school time, were you aware of girls and uh, the, the opportunity to like? Were you trying, or was it just like off the radar altogether? Yeah, I was definitely aware. It was, I was involved in everything but the final act. So I, but but I wasn't the initiator. I was being placed into these scenarios where, you know, the the one, the little girl was the one leading the show. It's like, yo, come over to my house. My parents are gone. I'm like, okay, you know, and I get in there and it's boom, 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 boom. And I'm like, okay. I mean, yeah, I enjoyed it, but I, I wasn't devious enough to construct the scenarios that they were putting together for me. So yeah, I was involved in the whole nine of everything, but I guess they weren't trying to push me to go all the way until, you know, until I got like 18, 19 or whatever, but the, all the other steps. Yeah, for sure. So I was definitely aware. Um, I was a quiet dude, very introverted. You know, a lot of people liked me and stuff like that, but I was super quiet. My, and I'm like this to this day, like I'm not a shy person, but I enjoy my time alone. And I kind of recharged by myself. And I was definitely like that then as well. But I had my little crushes. So even though, you know, these little girls were coming at me, I had my two or three that I really liked, you know, out of that bunch. And so now here's the interesting thing about me. Once I hit 18 or 19, though, 
Yeah. He was off to the races. Off to the races, right? Like, right. Wow, this dude is the and, man. And I knew exactly what to do. I knew exactly what to say. It's like everything just connected at that point. And I was it was off to the race. I mean, I got a million stories on that, but yeah. Yeah, it was late bloomer, but then I feel like I outpaced a lot of my peers once I did start, you know. So well, what was the like I talked about the the not like I had in college and then we talk, I guess you were 19, you're in college or, at that time. Yeah. You know, compared to the guys around you, what was the what was what was the measuring stick? I'll talk about I knew guys in college that, you know, man, I, I got this one guy, I promise I will not say his name. He's still my Facebook friend and if people who are watching, know, they probably know who I'm talking about, but I mean, pretty boy. It was amazing how the women just fell at his feet. Like it, it was so amazing to me. Like I, I never experienced women like coming on to a guy, like women even saying to me, you know him, can you give him my number? Can you, can, I was just like, but this guy had, Oh my God, it was unreal. Yeah. I mean, women this guy slept with, man. Unreal. Now, I'm talking, if I'm saying 10 a week, I might be too low. Yeah. Yeah. And it's like, who didn't he screw on campus? You know what I mean? Or off campus. It's like, yeah. so what was the measuring stick in your, in, amongst your guys, your, your, your squad? Well, yeah, the measuring stick, it wasn't – so in college, I lived in this, like, apartment <laughs> building, and it was a bunch of people on the basketball team. Everybody in the dorm was a player, every single person. So what the measuring stick was is how many girls you could bring into the dorm. That Because that's something – even if you couldn't see what was going on behind closed doors, you saw when they brought them in. You saw when Eric brought in and whoever else – so that was what people were, I feel like, were gunning for, like, that visual. And that's what, that's what the, I feel like the measuring stick was. And then the other thing is that I was out in South Carolina. Shout out to South Carolina at the time and uh, when I was a freshman. And there was a club. I tell people this all the time. There was a nightclub open every night of the week. And so we still had that old school measuring stick of how many numbers did you get in the club? How many numbers? Yeah, how many numbers? I remember that. Oh, yeah, I remember yeah, how many numbers. Right? So everybody and, – and the thing that's so funny about me is is as laid back as I was in high school, I was one of the more aggressive people in the club. It's so really? funny. I can't even believe it now as I'm older. But, like, I used to go hard in the club. Like, it was – I was very – I wasn't one of these guys that's, like, yanking on people. And I had interests also without me having to do that. But, like, I was definitely – down to initiate like yo what's your name and all of that you know i was like trying to get every number i could in that space during that hour three hours we're in the club which is very comical to me still but definitely at the end of the day it's like yo dog how many numbers did you get and yeah you the numbers you know? well what was the, what was a hot what was a hot night for you uh hot night was uh if i walked out with eight numbers that was a good Woo, you was the man you was the I man did, I did not happen every time now i'm not trying to say that right 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 oh, if that happened like yeah i did See, i'm the, i'm the i'm the opposite like if my probably my hottest night was like three okay like three numbers like oh, wow, that, was, that was my hot night okay. but I, I was unaware man of i didn't know shit man i'm I, and i'm i'm from and now I'm probably getting to going into another area, but you know, my parents divorced when I was a sophomore in high school. So, and then my dad had a had left mom for another woman. Okay, so I probably had this. I, I'm sure I had a whole nother dynamic about relationships and women going on. While I and I it, now that I think about it, it was at the time when I really was on some. I ain't never getting married. I'm gonna have this red Corvette living this. Live in Lake Point Towers, and I'm just gonna be a, a player for the rest of my life. So, uh, yeah, I was I, I wasn't at that time high school. Getting I wasn't even I had no concept of what to do. Okay, you know when it came to you know 
being with a girl or, 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 or sex or anything, even though my mom had that conversation, I didn't know. I don't think I got it together until halfway through college. Mm. You know, when I started to understand a little bit, a little bit more about women. And even, even today, I don't think I know a lot about women at all at all i don't think i know a lot about women i just know what i know about my experiences yeah i probably don't know as much as i think i know but uh, nah. women are definitely a mystery now i want to ask you this though so i want to ask you two things first thing is how big of a, a and and now if you're out there if you like this com this conversation you know this is money sex Gen X episode four we're attempting to talk about sex in a non vulgar way but definitely get into it you know we Scott and I really felt like this was a conversation that needed to be had yeah. but how much of a role did pornography play in your life at a young age maybe before college. Did it play a role at all? Had you been exposed to that? Yeah, I'm from, my dad had Hustler magazines under the bed. Um, so I remember sneaking through those Playboy magazines. I remember if they were home and I found, and it's, it, I, I, man, kids going to snoop through your shit. You know what I mean? So I remember finding my dad's Playboy collection under the bed or in the closet. Um. I think one of my early remembrances was like, first of all, I, I wish I was looking for more black women. It was a lot of white women in those in magazines, those magazines yeah. lots of white women. And I didn't really care for white women. I was, and so when I would see, um, I don't know if it was Hustler, it was a, it was a, a black tail, black tail. Yeah. My dad had a couple of black tails and that's when I started to like appreciate, um, fine looking women man so that and then the only other exposure i had to porn was i think it was like on tv they see the line down the squiggly line down the middle yeah uh cinemax skinemax yeah max after dark yeah that was my first exposure to it that's all yeah. i had for yeah yeah that yeah. was something back then and I, I remember watching it i remember you know getting an erection from it you know what i mean like watching the act a squiggly line down the, down the screen but i was like into it as much as i could watch before my parents got up or came in the room i watched you know yeah definitely yeah i, I definitely got exposed to the to that at a pretty young age i remember the first time me and me and these guys grew out playing basketball one of the homies said, come in the house real quick. I had to show y'all something. His mother was gone. And the next thing I know, boom, it's right there. And I remember I got an erection and I put the basketball in front of it. Uh -huh. and I'm sitting there like, yo, this is crazy. Like, I, you know, it was my first time seeing it. I'm like, wow. Right, right. <laughs> that just blew my mind. Yeah. And yeah. so... From there, it's like, you know, you begin this exploration. But I wondered about that because I'm not, I was wondering if like the millennials consume porn as much as we probably did or people in our generation did coming up. I, I think I saw some stats that said that they don't, but I would wonder about that. Shit, they, music is porn, man. It's That's true. There it is. It's <laughs> yeah, they don't need a different, need Shit. everyone at all yeah. the one. But we do know, did you find any stacks that shows like Pornhub is still like the number one website in the world? For sure. For sure. In the world. Yeah, for sure. And you don't, I mean, I didn't, I remember I went on Pornhub a couple of times. I didn't know a lot about it. I went, I didn't know it was like that easy to access. I was like, oh, yeah. what? You know, just yeah. like, just go to it? Like, yeah. no real filters? Like, anybody can get this? Like, That's why so many little kids are on there. <clears throat> all those little so, kids. Do we both have children? Talk about little kids. I have a son. My son is eleven. Do you? You have a daughter. Your daughter's a teenager. I have two teenage daughters. I gotta, you know, I take, I count my girlfriend's daughter. She's twenty. Do okay. you talk to these kids? Do you talk to your kids about sex? Yeah, we've had some brief conversations about it. 
Um, so my son is 12. My daughter is going to be 17 in a few days. Okay. Uh, in June. So my daughter, I think she feels more comfortable having those conversations with her mother, which I'm, you know, I'm cool with that. But I've said a, we've had a couple of little conversations where I try to weave in a few little things, but not explicitly. And then my son, I have to start talking to him a little bit. But what I basically told him is don't let these little girls pressure you. Yeah. I, I sense that he's going through that too. Like they want, you know, they're pressuring him. And so I told him one day, particularly last summer, I'm like, yo, don't let these little girl, girls pressure you. There's nothing wrong with liking a little girl and all that. But as far as the sexual piece, you got time for that. Yeah. Just try to wait. I started talking to my son um uh maybe a year and a half ago so maybe as he was a maybe as he was approaching 10 or around 10 or 11 let me get this energy shot in real quick ah what is this this energy, Five hour energy? nah this is a neutral burst bro okay neutral burst i got me a little shot of that so like um feel like you did something already um but i went hard with my son bro i went hard with my son. i was not gonna pull no punches and when i say i went hard I'm, I'm not gonna you know i had to i had to be reminded to use the correct uh anatomical words for his body parts so penis and vagina right um, but i also didn't hold no punches on calling it by its uh nicknames right and you're calling is you know I we we talked we ta i know that he um i know when he got his first direction i know that he you know and it's easy for me to talk about him than it is to talk about myself but you know and, it, and he's probably watching so i probably shouldn't do that to him but <laughs> we, had, we had some very deep conversations about it very so we went in um my whole thing was to him is to always always be a gentleman never be the jerk no means no definitely no means absolutely no like yeah, she says cool. no back away dude do not yeah. i'm on that don't no pressure yeah like she pretty much gotta gotta come to you right well it's good no. you told me that. yep especially nowadays yeah um with my daughters um my two daughters and of course i got twins too they're seven months so i'm not talking about them but my two teenage daughters um i knew when both of them first had sex okay and i always always ran it down to them um uh, so they would try i wanted i never wanted them to be caught up in the game i never wanted them to be that chick that got they name run through the mud or to be the one that they couldn't walk through the school with the heads held high, you know? Yeah, yeah. So I've, I've never sugarcoated a thing with them, like letting them know, like dudes is trying to hit. I don't care what they say, they're trying to hit. And right. if you allow that, then let that be your choice and um, nothing else, but yeah. have respect for yourself you're going to do it. You know, I know it was going to happen, but I ain't hold no punches with that conversation at all. Do you feel like that looking back now, do you feel like that was helpful? Um, I, I did what I thought I should have done. Okay. I don't know. Um, my, my girls have had both varying experiences. Um, you know, some that I, I wish that they didn't have have, but I'm glad that I know about it. Right. Um it's good that they're willing to tell you about it. Too. It's good that they're willing to tell me about it. So um I and also I did something, man. I um I exposed them to some of the early music. I exposed both my daughters early to some of the music that I listened to in the eighties and nineties. So I I let them hear freaky tales. Good, good. Yeah. Um, I don't know if it was good or bad. I mean, I was, but my point was just trying to 
expose them to what dudes be on like right. dudes that you want to avoid like this is what dudes be on for real like hear this you need to hear how guys are talking about women that they might not say this to your face but this is the perspective of the essence of a guy when he's you know in front of a chick that he's trying to have sex with absolutely like, this is what he's saying so hear this so you know it so that was my perspective that was that was when it came to the kids that's been my approach i don't know if it's right or wrong i think that's a good approach i mean i'm definitely going to be having more conversations with with my little man soon but um you know i did kind of have that conversation with my daughter about you know don't be that chick and, and all of that stuff right and i think she kind of understood that through having conversations with her mother like you know if you do do something don't be the person that's, that's out there like that but um yeah i, I think it's a, I, I applaud you for having those conversations and I, I would i would argue that that's the reason why they're okay with telling you as things happen you know like dad this happened because you were having those conversations and it's not taboo it's like oh i can't talk to my dad about yeah yeah you can because we've been talking about it the whole time right that's a good strategy i have to borrow some of that as far as um letting my daughter possibly hear some things from the 80s and 90s that are kind of explicit because i feel like back then even when they talked about it it was still kind of done in, in an intelligent manner even if it was raunchy there was still some intellect being used in the discussion you How know do you explain that dig into that it was intellect and and uh freaky yeah. you remember freaky tales i do i do i do yeah, uh, you know, it was in so the way that it was approached, it wasn't like reckless. Like when I remember listening to Freaky Tales, it wasn't, it was just raw. But I think Too Short was very clear about why he was doing the song and what, it, even like Ice T. Remember Ice T, some of his early stuff? I just feel like they had a bigger thought process and just i'm trying to be nasty i'm gonna put this nasty song the guy i don't i never felt like that i felt like it was more educational but also very raunchy and raw at the same time that's how i feel and then remember we came up in that aids era so especially when that started to pop off there was a lot of like education being weaved in you know wear a condom be careful and all of that and so yeah i think it was done a little bit different now, I can't speak to all the music now because I'm not tapped into it, but I just yeah. know what I experienced. Now, how did you feel? We're still talking about uh, sex. How did you feel? Where were you and how did you feel about when uh, you heard Easy e had AIDS? Man, I, let's see, I probably was like in late middle school. It, it blew my mind because that's when I, I I really didn't know what AIDS was, but I had enough sense to know he was going to I, he was going to die. And so once I put all the pieces together, probably in like the next year, I was kind of horrified. I'm like, man, this guy is going to die over having sex, basically. Now, now, Easy E died in the '90s, though, so I don't think you were in middle school at the time. When, when did this this look that up? When did Easy? What year did he die? Yeah, check that out because I I believe it was definitely the nineties because Bone Thugs and Harmony was out. Oh, okay, it was later than I thought. He died in ninety five. Yeah, so you were like twenty two. So who was somebody got HIV back when we were still in? Like middle school though, who was the first case of that you remember of somebody that had AIDS? I, I, th I thought it was maybe, uh, it was easy. It was easy for me. He didn't lose magic, that long, was magic. When did magic oh, come Oh, no, nah, it was magic. It was mad. Hold on. It was magic. Yeah. I think it was Magic Johnson. But that was around the same time, wasn't it? I'm, tr I'm trying to Google real quick. I feel like it was somebody that came around when I was young that had AIDS like in the late 80s. I, Let me check real quick. What year did magic? This is the Money Sex Gen X podcast. We do research here. We pull statistics, real-time research, numbers. We're not guessing here. Money Sex Gen X with Eric McLoyd 
and me, your man, Big Stu, episode four. Let's talk about sex. What you find with? What? what you actual find? Actual facts. Actual facts. So uh, Magic Johnson was 1991. Dang. So that's the, that's the early. So he was. Yeah. He was the first. He stunned the world. They wouldn't let him play. Nobody wanted to play with him. And his boy Isaiah, Isaiah Thomas, didn't want to touch him. Didn't want to. Yeah. And then a few years later, Easy E was the next big one for the HIV AIDS. Yeah. I know with the magic, I know. So 91, I was 20. And okay. um, I was just like, damn. Because he was still married. Did it scare you? Hell yeah. 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 But, but not so much because I felt like, I mean, it did, but but it was like it's magic. Like you knew these NBA players were sleeping around. Like you, well, it, you you know, you had all these ideas that they had lots of women. You, d- I just didn't, I just didn't know that that was magic. I, I saw, I didn't think magic did that. I did. <laughs> <laughs> Man, I always saw magic as a player. Like he just seemed like one of them smooth player type dudes. I always viewed him like that. I always thought cats like that, you know, I just thought they were above the temptation, above reproach. Mm -hmm. And I I was like just more shocked that he had done that to himself, had, you know, all these women and then was married. And but um, yeah, man. So that 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 and easy. I think I was really, really into definitely into condoms. At the time, like, um, got to strap up, baby. Got to strap up. Do not want to catch that that luggage, man. Do not want to catch that luggage. Yeah, unfortunately, I wasn't as responsible as you were. Um, and I got lo- I really feel like I was very fortunate because, first of all, and I'm not blaming this on my parents, but they, I, they didn't have that conversation with me about how to strap up. Still knew that I should be. Yeah. But it just, you know, my experiences, it just wasn't, it just wasn't happening. And so it's bad. Boy, that brings that, bring, that boy, that gives us a lot of content, man, because I, I although I did strap up, I I, I took my shot a, a, a number of times. Uh definitely took my shot yeah. a number of times. And the 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 ratio, the statistics, the statistics. We ought to add statistics to this show, man. Because I'm interested in like, the statistics by your chances of catching an STI, STD, or something. Yeah, having unprotected sex versus not ha- you know versus having protected sex, and even with all this going on with this COVID shit and all this, like statistically, what are your chances for getting caught up? Yeah, I'm sure they were extremely high, man. I love to see that too. They were. And I'm telling you, I definitely, because I remember when I took my first AIDS test, you talk about somebody being scared. Indeed. Death. I'm Indeed. talking about scared to my core. Damn. And I'm thinking, Damn. no, it's no way. Like, yo, it, and then I'm, then I went through the whole thing. Like, are you, you stupid? Like, why would you do this? And this, because ah. like, at that point, I really, really understood the magnitude and the gravity of what I have been doing. I'm like, yo, you got to be the dumbest dude in the world. <laughs> but thankfully I did not have HIV AIDS, none of that. Right. But man, after that, I definitely was more responsible because I'm like, nah. After I'm that, you weren't like, cool, well, I can keep going at it the way I'm going at it. Nah. Don't get me wrong. I wasn't super Joe responsible, but I was more responsible, than, way more than I was. Than sure. I have been in the past for sure. That's good, brother. That's, that's really good. That's really and then good. as I got older, I got progressively more and more responsible. Or whatever. Now I want to. I want to get into this. This is something that I always wanted to talk about. So I'm glad we got this forum. So throughout my entire life, I've always heard the ladies uh, talk about, and I'm talking about black women uh, primarily, but I'm sure all groups have these conversations. Have these conversations about the man's package. Yeah. You know what I'm talking about? The man's package and yeah. Yeah. what they do and this, that, and the other, the, yeah. the size and all of that, right? Yeah. 
And they really get deep into it to express, and I don't have a problem with it. You know, it is what it is. That's that's what that's how they gauge whatever, right? Which is cool. But I've never heard, and this is the question I'm gonna ask you, are all women created equal in terms of their package? Now, let me tell you why I'm asking you this. I had a conversation late last week with a millennial. And I, we kept talking about sex, and it got to the point where I had to make the point that just because a man inserts himself into a woman does not automatically mean, and he may even climax, it does not mean that it was necessarily good. It doesn't necessarily mean that it was enjoyable. You know, it could be moderately enjoyable. It doesn't mean he had the best time of his life. And she was very shocked about that because her assumption was is that men, as long as they were doing the acts, they were cool. And I had to explain to her that, in my opinion, that all women are definitely not created equal. Just like women have those conversations about men not being created equal, same thing on the women's side. What are your thoughts? I agree with you. I've had some trash. And at the same, let me say, I'm I'm probably sure there's some women that probably <laughs> say that I've been trash, you know. <laughs> but um they're not all creative equally. I have I have I have you would think that a man would never turn down an opportunity to sleep with a woman. I have completely been turned off by uh what I was about to get into. Um, for a number of reasons and have talked my way out of a number of situations. My stomach hurt. My head hurt. I got something to do. Uh, no, they're not all uh, created. And, and I have, un at the same time, I have had sex with women that I did not want to have sex with. And um, I have at one time at least faked an orgasm. Um <laughs> Or just like came to like hurry it up and be over. Oh, I can relate to that for sure. For but sure. then I've had some amazing experiences where like shit, I did not mean to come that fast. Right. <laughs> Absolutely. No question about it. I'm yeah. So sorry. I didn't <laughs> no doubt. You know, but yeah. No, women are not all packaged the same and um they can be trash. There's some women that can be definitely trash, bro. You are rocking with the Money, Sex, Gen X podcast. This is episode four. Oh. Let's talk about sex, baby. We talking about it too, man. We talking Getting into about it, it, man. And you know what? There's some younger people that are watching this show on the replays and some of them on the live. You know, I think it's good for women to know that, yeah, we do have preferences and we have different experiences when we are having sex. We're not just happy just to be having sex. And there is a thing that we probably all have where we feel like that woman, some women just have that thing. What do they call it? Je ne sais quoi or whatever. They just they got it. You know what I mean? And, and that might vary from person to person, but my experience has been some women just have that thing. Remember that Lauren Hill song, that thing, that thing? Some people just got it. And, and now I'm going to ask you something. The ones that you ended up being intimate with that had that thing, did you have that radar to be able to pick up on that ahead of time? Just the hope. Just the hope. Mm -hmm. Just the hope. Um, there are certain features on a woman that give me hope that, 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 that they have that thing. Okay. Um, but I couldn't really tell. It was just a hope. It was just just a hope. Hey, listen. Before we go any further, we can't see it this week because we're doing. But we have a lot of comments. Let me let me back up here. We have a lot of comments on this conversation. Starting it that actually doesn't start with, but I'm gonna pick it up with um uh, Mike Tyler, who is Mike Tyler. Shout out to Mike Tyler. Mike Tyler. Uh, Mike Tyler been, been rocking with us since day one. Yes, you are our number one fan, but Mike is going is 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 they going it's going down in here. So let me just pick it up. Uh, my man Craig Wallace is in here, and the question that I asked was: Are all women packaged the same? 
He says, oh, no, oh, hell no. Mike Tyler says, y'all get into black feminism. Mm. Uh, wow. and, um, and, Andreas, uh, Andrea has says, nothing is packaged. It's all packaged the same. Uh, Craig has said he has had something to smell bad that was dry and mm. too wide. Um, Andrea says he could be too small for her and that on this Sunday she is clutching her pearls. Mm. Uh, wow. And uh, so it's going down in the comment section here today. I'm glad to see that. I was wondering why I can't really see it. Like you said, I can't see it on our screen this week because we kind of switched it up. I'm glad people are getting engaged. But yeah, man, I, you know, that's my thing. I feel like we always hear that conversation from the women. You know, they'll even say stuff like they look at our shoes or our hand side, you know. They, and so I always wanted to talk to another man about that. Like, So me, I have a... Uh, this is gonna sound crazy, so but it is what it is. I'm telling the truth. I have a sixth sense for that. For, for the, the for, for the for the it. Yeah, I have a sixth sense for that, and it, it I am 99% accurate. Wow. Okay. That, that whether or not it's gonna be trash or whether it's gonna be that thing. No question. Wow. Now, I've always had it so. When you were talking about acting like your stomach hurt and all that, I was even aware of it when I was younger, but I'd be like, nah, you know, my stomach hurt. I got to go to basketball practice or whatever. I don't want to do it, right? But I've always known that. Now that I'm older, I'm very aware of what that is. It's a sixth sense that I have. And I've talked well, to women that said the same thing. Like, they know which guys they encounter that's going to be a good partner. They know. I, not all, but I've talked to some women yeah. that definitely had that sixth sense for themselves, and they're like, it's very accurate, and they don't entertain the rest of the guys. Like, they know which one's going to be that one. Everybody yeah. out there that's in the comments, do you have a sixth sense for which part, which of your sexual partners are going to be the, the perfect match, you know, the one that you really are going to be liking and enjoying? Do you have a sixth sense? Is that really a thing? Are we making this up? You know, this is like a fairy tale that we got in our head. I think it's real. And Andrea is saying that's an assumption. Mm. She said, "said Nope, she don't have. Um, uh, she don't have. She don't have anything." Mike Tyler says they do know. Women do know. Uh, but now you're making me think. Uh, she says, uh, "I don't know. I trust no man." Uh, so let me go back to you. So it, what it was it? Is it the is it the way the hips move? Is it the the way they you know eat an apple? Is it the way they talk? Or the way they what? It, what is it? What's the what's the secret? E? It's not a. It's not one thing. It's just a vibe that I pick up. Obviously, I would have to be attracted. You know, I have my definition of what's attractive. But then on top of that, it's just a vibe. You know, I can't like the only way I can describe it. It's just a vibe that I get. A little bit in how they walk. And I've heard comedians talk about this and laugh about this, but like the some of them got a certain walk that I pick them like, okay, you know, I just that's part of it, but I think more of it is kind of intangible. Just a vibe that I get. And I'm not talking about this, you know, how women be like, he was confident. No, I'm not talking about that. It's just something that's not necessarily on the on the surface. I just pick it up. And just pick up a vibe. So you got, vibe. you got the sixth sense. You got the sixth sense. I got it. For that, anyway. For other things, I don't. <laughs> but for that, I, I do. I do. Okay. All right. Well, that served me well. But I, you know, I did wonder that other people, other men, have that sixth sense. And I'm sure some do. I'm sure they do. Yeah. yeah I'm not the only one. They know. Uh, I, 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 it used to be. Uh, I, I think one of the judges for me. Uh, could be how well they dance might be an indication or uh their flexibility flex yeah. yeah flexibility i've seen i've seen uh a lot of women have had a lot of time during this lockdown and they've been posting uh, some women have been posting a lot of different pictures not that i'm looking for them but i see them across my timeline sometimes and they flex it and mm -hmm. i said that well if you can if you can do that with your legs then okay all right yeah, no doubt yeah. that's interesting I, we probably had to talk about that at length 
in the future again. But you know, now I want to talk about what were you really looking for? So you didn't have the sixth sense that I had, right? You know, but you had what were you looking for in terms of making that decision to, to enter that act with this with this woman? My chances. Mm. What are my chances okay. of catching that body? So you were running risk ratios. Risk <laughs> risk wow. ratios. Okay. Okay. Now I want to back up before we. I want to back up. I want to back. I want to ask you a question. Yes, like, sir. Um, did it matter, or how how much does it matter to you whether or not? And maybe you were going to get to this, but how much does it matter to you whether or not a woman has an orgasm? It matters greatly. And so, so do you base your performance? I know I sometimes base my performance on whether or not I can get her to have an orgasm. Yeah, I mean, I wouldn't say I base my performance on that. I feel like with women, this is what I feel like about women. And I know you and I have a very high regard for women, especially yeah. black women. That's clear, right? Yeah. I never... I, I think the reason why I think they have been, I believe, successful is because I don't assume that, I don't even assume that the orgasm is necessarily authentic, right? So, no. okay. No, no, I don't. I mean, I would, I believe that they were, but it, I'm never going to just be like, oh, yeah, you know, because you, I just feel like with women, you just don't know. Now, I think there's some physical indicators that you can be pretty sure, right? But I think what I always tried to, to approach it from a perspective of, I want to make sure she's satisfied first, and then I worry about myself. That's just how I've always been. And maybe that's because I started a little bit later and you were, you know, you were you kind of unsure and all that. But then even as time went on and I was confident, it's like, no, nah, I want to make sure she's good. And then I'll do, you know, I'll get mine on, on the back end. <laughs> My Tyler says, who cares about her orgasm? Wow. And that and you know what? I think a lot of women, that's their problem with us. Yeah, yeah, right. Like, yeah, I don't care. And so to go back in the beginning, um, in the beginning of the, the question, in the beginning of my time, I think I was just so um selfish that mm. I only cared about me. And if I got it, I got it. If I got if I if I got the draws, I got the draws. And that's all I cared about. And I think I had to grow into kind of your perspective, understanding that sex is so much more than the number of times you can score. Like there's something else to it. And that's when I started get understanding these uh soul ties. And so when I started understanding soul ties and and, and and this was in my 20s, you know, like you lay with a person, you kind of carry that person with you. You don't, you know, that's the soul tie. Right, right. right. Um, and then as of late, learning how to break soul ties, but yeah. understanding like, you know, sex is, has a lot more depth than what I initially understood when I first started having sex. True indeed. And, I, and I'm gonna be, I feel like when you are concerned about the woman you get more out of, of of that from her because they sense when you care and when you don't. I think you'll get more out of it. But, you know, again, I'm not judging. You know, if you're out there, you're doing your thing, do it how you feel like you need to do it. But just for me, I feel like I've gotten way more by being concerned about that. Because then they flip it and they be like, now nah, I want you. I want, now I want to make sure you're good. You know, yeah. and so like you can, it's reciprocated, hopefully. But now, yeah. I it's an interesting thing that uh, they always try to say that younger men don't care about that, but I, I definitely did. But I do think that most younger people are worried about. Now, let me let's talk about this. So I always wonder why, like men that were older, it's still like they would still seem like they were still intrigued with the fact that they could get the sex. And I never understood that because it's like if you're 30 something years old and you're 40 and you've been out here doing your thing, like you can't. I just feel like, why are you still intrigued with just getting the sexual interaction? Like you would, I would assume that if there's an attraction, you're going to have sex. 
You know, what I mean? like are people out here in their forties still like, yeah, I mean, cause I even told one of my homeboys that he was like running down all these women he was messing with. I'm looking at him like, you sh but you should be like, what are you talking about? Like, why are we talking about this? You're still infatuated with the idea that you got four or five women. I would imagine that anybody could, should be able to do that. Like, what is that infatuation? Is it still that numbers game from the past or what? I think it's, uh, it goes back to an early conversation that we had in probably episode one about maturity. It's, it's age doesn't necessarily mean you're mature. And I think it was like another episode, episode two, when we were talking about uh, how getting to the, and maybe it was episode one, we were talking about the way of the superior man. And there's a level where you get to just appreciate the art. Yeah, yeah. And some of us just aren't there yet. It's just like right. we're still in that first phase man, which is all natural stuff. It's just all innate. Right. Give me, give me her. Just give give me her. And and as many women as I can have approves me, which is a maturity issue. Yeah, I agree. I agree. It's a maturity issue. So yeah, yeah, I, I mean. And and ego ego look ego still wants you to be like you still got it, but it seems like to me your ego you would be your ego would be even more fulfilled if you if you were able to get the woman and please her and yourself and make something productive out of the situation. Like to me, that feeds my ego more than just I got the situation. All right, so let me switch this. Let me swing this pendulum a little bit. And 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 have you ever been in a relationship? Okay, no, no, no. I don't want to do that. I'll get myself in trouble. But <clears throat> one of the reasons I imagined being in a committed relationship, one of the reasons, and this is a lot, one of the reasons that relationships are even built, was on this um, um, we're we're monogamous, right? And and you you commit that you won't sleep with anyone else, either one of us, if you're in a monogamous relationship, not an open, but if you're in a monogamous, neither one of us will sleep with anyone else. Mm -hmm. But then you're in a relationship and you get into these periods of times where maybe you guys are not even liking each other, but you're together, you're not willing to break up, but you're not having sex, but you desire to have sex. And then lo and behold, somebody slides in your DM, hey, how you doing? Hey, handsome. How you doing? And now, you know, now you got this, your natural innate stuff happening that makes you, you know, kind of feeds that ego piece. Have, have, you, have you ever experienced that? How do you handle yourself in those moments? Yeah, I've experienced that. You know what? I think I'm just a different type of person. Like, it doesn't, it's cool to get attention and all of that, but it doesn't, I don't feel like that strokes my ego. I would be looking more at the level of woman who did that versus the fact that somebody just showed me some attention. You know what I mean? Like if it's just some, oh, yo, what's up? You look, all right, cool. You know what I mean? It's, it's whatever. But like if it's a really solid, what I consider solid woman that I would normally deal with and I'm having that little rough patch, it would be harder in that instance. But not just because anybody showed me some attention. I, I, I just never been like that. You know what I mean? But if it's somebody that's the, the, the like the stereotype, or, I mean, or the archetype of who I typically deal with, yeah, it would be difficult in that moment. Like, man, let me just stay away from that situation or whatever, for sure. So you're at a point where, <clears throat> you know, you can you can thwart off the temptations of other women. I think I do a pretty good job, yeah. I, think I, do a okay. I don't want to sit up here and act like I'm perfect and all of that because I'm not. And I don't want to act like I'm better than some other dude. Definitely not. I'm just saying my the way that I'm wired, it depends. The quality is an issue, is more of a factor than the volume. Yeah. If 10 women try to holler at me tomorrow, it's not going to make me happy, sad, or anything like that. But it could be one. I am in a committed relationship right now. Let me throw that out there. But if my woman approaches me that's quality, that would have a bigger impact than 15 women trying to give my try to talk to me. That's, that's how I view it. That's how I feel. We got our first piece of uh, critical feedback. <gasps> oh, 
Mike Tyler says, we are not doing proper justice to this piece. Wow. <laughs> well, you know what, Mike? We need to have you on one day as a guest, I feel. So you can so you can help us do it justice, but um, he, he wants us to talk about child support. Mm -mm. <laughs> Absolutely not. That's something we don't need to talk about. He wants us to talk about family court and child support. No sir, no, no sir. sir. I don't want to talk about it. We're not talking about that at no. all. <laughs> and I don't think that's a topic that, that, most that ain't our topic, bro. Talk about. Nah. Nah, that ain't our topic. That ain't our topic. We're not gonna get that on Money Sex Gen X, brother. Unfortunately, but um, yeah, no, 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 not gonna happen. But um, yeah, man. So let's get into this. So now that we've evolved, you know, we talked about we've evolved our sexual views and all of that, and we definitely have some standards when we're thinking about who to be intimate with. I want to talk to you about what role do you feel like the women you've been with, what role did you feel like their parents played when you got to the full-blown, so now we're going from sex to full-blown relationships. What role did you feel, or if any, did the parents of that woman uh, play in your relationship once it became super intimate? Huge roles, huge roles. Um, now that's, that's my answer for now, just like huge roles. Um, positive or negative? It both. It depends. I remember I was dating this one young lady, um, in in my you know late twenties, and she was super nice. And I was thinking, like I had, I'm like, ah, oh, she might, she she, she kind of, she could be the one. She could be, she could be the one. But her mother is like. It was like everything was centered around her and her mother, like every, and it was like, no, nah, I do not want that. I do not want that. Like everything we talk about your mama know, like everything, like nah. Yeah. Yeah. And so her mother is weighing in on conversations. Her mother's calling me about conversations that I had with her daughter. No, what? Nah. Yeah. Um. And then on the other side, you know, I have parents who, you know, or girls whose parents who let us be us. You know, they stay out of it. They, um, but then even just better understanding how they were raised helps me understand who they are. You know, at that time in the relationship. I'm glad you said that. So, do you find this is one of those things I always want to talk about again? When the now let's talk about the father. Do you find that the relationship is different? And and if you're out there, money, sex, Gen X podcast, let's talk about sex. We've been talking about sex the entire time. Now we're kind of transitioning to the aftermath of some sexual relationships where there is a, a deep commitment in the actual relationship. But the father, when what role do you feel like the father has played? No, I, here's a better question. Do you notice a difference in the relationships that you've had with women when the father was in the picture while they were growing up versus when the father was not in the picture? Is it was there a difference? Yeah, well, <laughs> it's gonna be one of those comments when um, <laughs> uh, ladies that are uh, young ladies that I dated that didn't have their father in the picture, they never made the cut. Okay. They never made the cut. They never made the cut. Um, I only have had meaningful relationships with women who currently or had, you know, had their father in the picture. Okay. You know, but chicks who's like, I can't, I can't, I can't feel that role for you. You know, I, and I mean, and if their father wasn't in their picture, they like, I became the father figure and, uh, that wasn't a role that I wanted to play. But I also am able to, or was able to look at however the relationship was with their father was a great indication of the type of relationship I would have with them. I agree wholeheartedly. That's been my experience too. If you're out there and you're, you're a millennial or you're in a younger generation, please pay attention to this conversation because it's Again, it's not judging anybody. We're just talking about our experiences. But for me as well, I definitely have noticed a difference in the relationship when the father was present 
versus when the father wasn't present. And the, the, the woman, obviously, a lot, they can't control whether the father was present or not, right? So not blaming them or, or doing anything like that. But the reason why I'm bringing this up is because, you know, Money, Sex, Gen X, we designed this show, Scott and I, to talk about relevant issues, right? One, there's very relevant when thinking about family and being able to kind of think about what are, what criteria am I supposed to use to determine what types of relationships that I want to have. Now, don't get it twisted. I've had relationships with women who didn't have the father in the home and I had great relationships with them, right? And I've had relationships, I will say more so than not though, when I've had relationships with women who had the father, it was an easier relationship, but it doesn't mean that the woman was any less because they didn't have the father, but we had some different challenges that we had to work through. That's and let me clarify this point <clears throat> because I have two daughters who I am not in the home with, mm -hmm. but I am absolutely in their lives. I mean, we, we have open lines of communication. So I want to be clear. We're talking about the difference between a, a woman having a relationship with her father, whether he's in her life or not. Like he can, he can like in her life, and then not having a relationship versus just having a relationship with your father. Yeah, because I'm gonna make that distinction partially yeah. for me, but I I know there was a woman that I once dated. Her father is alive and well. She does not talk to her father at all, and that played then it played in you know it was a role that played in our. So I just wanted to make that distinction. Yeah, that we're talking about women that have relationships with their father versus women that do not have a relationship with their father. That's a great point. And I've been with women who had a relationship with the father, but it wasn't a good one. Right. Okay. Just because they're in the house or they have a relationship doesn't, you know, as we know, it doesn't mean it was good. It could be very, it could be horrible. Let me get to some of these note, these comments. Uh, Craig has said, uh, the uh, well, Mike Tyler says the mother has to subscribe to Black feminism, so this is the result. Please do the research. Uh, Craig says seems that women that have had a good relationship with their father don't understand men as much as those that do. Um, Craig also said I've noticed that women who didn't have a father around tend to not respect men as much. Um, and then Mike Tyler says, absence of the father is essential because the mother cannot do it on her own. I have learned this as a high school teacher. So we've got a lot of great, great feedback dialogue happening in the comment section. Yeah, great feedback. Yeah, I think that's definitely an issue. I do think that the women who didn't have the father in the home, they have a harder time when you're in an intimate relationship, seeing you maybe as the leader of the home, for let for lack of a better word, right? Or the father figure, I think they struggle with that a little bit more um, because maybe just because they haven't seen it, you know, they yeah. haven't seen it as much or not directly in their home, but definitely an issue. Let me take, let me transition. This is a page, take a page out of your book. Mm -hmm. Let me ask you a question. I want to move this conversation along a little bit. What do you look for? And and maybe and and and, and I, I'm 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 kind of I'm taking the page out of your book. Mm -hmm. You asked this question about what do you look for in a life partner, wife, lady, etc. And what advice? This second part I'm really introduced uh, interested in. What advice would you give younger men trying to wife up? Oh, it's good. It's a great transition. That Well, part of it is what we just talked about. I would definitely pay attention to the family history. And not just, you know, it's easy to be like, well, look at the woman's family. Look at your own family history also. What was the dynamic in your own household? What was your father? What was his relationship with his mother? Because I'm telling you, nine times out of ten, you're going to do the same things that your father did. Damn. And you know what, man? I'm glad you brought this up because the biggest mistake that I feel like people make, and this might be controversial, I don't care what anybody says, you are your parents. And please clap back in the comments if you don't agree. But at the end of the day, 
And I'm not a psychologist, psych with all none of that stuff, but I'm telling you, you're your parents. So if your I have done exactly what my parents have done in all my romantic relationships to the to the letter, to the T. And I think we start off at a deficit when you don't realize that, like, even if you don't. You that's where you're that's your foundation. So you got that influence in you already. Pay attention to it. So that would be my main advice. What's your family history? And what's the family history of the young lady that you are thinking about wifing up? Start there. The second piece of advice, and I want I know it looks like you want to say something, but get go to counseling at the beginning of an intimate relationship. Please, whether it's at your church psychologist, whatever, go to counseling up front if you're thinking about wifing somebody up because there's a lot of issues that are going to come up that you wouldn't even conceive of. Seems like you wanted to say something. Man, that was a very, two very, very, very good suggestions, pieces of advice. You really hit me with that piece about you are your parents because I'm thinking about how do you break generational curses? And I think you answered it with your second piece of advice of go to counseling early. Early, early and often. Any suggestions for how to get someone to go to counseling if they don't want to go to counseling? Does that mean, hey, you ain't the one? Yes, it does. <laughs> You're not the one. If well, I can't get you to go to counseling, you ain't the one. Remember they used to say drop them like a bad habit. Drop them like a bat. And if you don't want to go to counseling, if you the one that don't want to go to counseling, then they person needs to leave you. Damn. That sounds cold, doesn't it? Well, it sounds real. I'm here for counseling. I believe in counseling. Go to counseling. Get counseling. But I know there are a lot of people, one or the other in a relationship is like, ah, we, we good. We don't need that. What we need counseling for? Red go flag. to counseling. Red flag. Off the top, yeah, yeah, definitely get counseling. But I, I'm curious, you know, at all. So we've been talking. Like, what what would, advice would you give a young man in his say he's 32, he found the one, he's thinking about wife and up. What would your advice be? Um, man, you got to have a hard conversations. You got to be with somebody. You have to be with somebody that you cannot be afraid to have a conversation with about anything. I'm a firm believer in, and this is, so I'm divorced and I was married for a long time before getting a divorce. And so I have, and I think that was just the, I just did that wrong. It, it had to be scrapped. It was wrong. Um, you have, if you are afraid to have a conversation with your partner, that's not the one. Yeah. Like, why would you be if what could you on, on earth be afraid to have a conversation with your partner about? Um, mm -hmm. Even if it's and this is a hard one, um, even if it's for a guy who maybe is not a mature, like like is attracted to another woman and feeling tempted. I wouldn't say necessarily go to your woman and be like, hey, I'm attracted to another woman. But you have to be uh, mature enough in that conversation to say. You know, we need to work on this part. I need, you know, because I'm feeling like I'm falling short in this area, and I'm I might make some mistakes down the road. No doubt. Um, so talk about everything is the number one piece. Um, and then and the second one, I would say, like, um, I think it's very very important to have a conversation about, and it's still part of talking. Talk about that money. Talk about your money. Talk about your money. And, uh, and and be on the same page financially, I think yeah. is important too. You know, funny, the show is Money, Sex, Gen X. We haven't talked about money that much. We got to really dive into that on one of the next episodes. But yeah, I agree with that, man. Here's my third tip on my end. Definitely uh, see what the interaction is between the young lady and your family. Now, how do you, okay. Is your mom still with you today? Is your mom still alive? Yes. Um, how, how, how is that? I mean, is your mom, uh, that's tough, man. Like I've gotten married and my mom didn't even know there, you know, I've been one, I learned a big lesson of don't try to come to your parents talk about you're getting married before they've had a chance to fully interact 
with the woman. You don't do that. You know, and I wondered, is that a cultural thing? I think that was just something I was doing. It's like, you don't do that. You let your the, the woman meet your father, your mother, if they're around, your brother, your cousins, and see what that dynamic is. Um, you don't just pop up talking about, yeah, I got married. You but know? what if your what if your moms and your family ain't feeling the, the chick, but you three years in, you four years, like, but they ain't feeling the they your oh, mama what? like uh, on the front end and not feeling them. Like when yeah, just on the front end, like you feeling the y'all y'all you and your lady, y'all, y'all grooving, y'all straight, and then you know, it's not until like a year and a half, two years in, and then you realize your your family ain't feeling it. Then I think that's tough, man. I mean, it's it's hard to prepare for that when it's like two years later, but I think if you can figure out on the front end that they're not feeling her or vice versa, even if you decide to continue on, at least you have that information. It was always important to me if I felt like, if I felt any bit that I thought that I was might like I could possibly give you a chance. Yeah, you had to go meet my mom. You were smart then. Always. You were smart. I wasn't like that. Yeah, I wasn't smart in that area at all. My mom has met some people, but in some crucial areas, it wasn't socialized enough. You know, and I and I learned from that. I learned well, we that. we lie to ourselves, Eric. Uh, like even, you know, I don't want to make it sound like I'm this super good guy because there have been things that maybe my mom has pointed out that I've been like, you're crazy. You tripping. You don't know what you're talking about. Yeah. When I probably should have more openly respected that perspective. Yeah, for sure. For yeah, sure. But at the time I wasn't humble enough to respect it no doubt no doubt yeah that comes yeah. Yeah. yeah yeah this is, the, this is the money sex gen x podcast yes it is yes yes episode four episode four hey let's real quick let's talk about next week before we kind of close out i know we're not about to close out of quite yet we have a i think a couple of more things to talk about but next we are taking a break next week Yes, taking a little break. We've done four episodes. We're going to recalibrate, try to bring you some even uh, better content and some better aesthetics. We're going to try to improve our show. Absolutely. Um, um, but uh, we are taking one week off, and then we'll be back. What's that, like May 10th? I think that's Mother's Day. Mm, okay. That's Mother's Day. Yeah, interesting day. Yeah. Yeah, we're going to take some time off. We want to try to bring on some guests and, you know, continue to shake things up and keep it interesting. But, yeah, we're going to take off a week. So, you know, tune back in on the tent. We'll have some more some more great content. And, you know, if you certain things we're not going to talk about, but, you know, we definitely are open to suggestions and comments. We're not looking for you to be like, oh, this is a great show. Say whatever's on your heart. You know what I mean? And, you know, we hope that we get positive feedback, but me and Scott, Scott and I are not sensitive like that. So say what you must, but um, we're going to continue to rock out and give you what we believe is the perspective of the black Gen X male in society. And, and remember, we, we started doing this show because we don't feel like we're being reflected properly, if at all, in the media. I, I am not a millennial. I'm not, you know, any other group. I love them all, but I am a Gen X. I'm a black male, and I want to hear content that I'm interested in. And that's why we decided to do this show. That's right. Final thoughts about sex. Give us your final. I'm, I'm, I'm actually going to go first, and I'll let you close it out. My final thoughts about sex. Sex is a wonderful thing. I enjoy sex. I love sex. Sex is to be, uh, uh, at this stage of me as a Gen Xer, sex is to be uh, matured um, and nurtured. Sex is to be treated with a level of maturity and appreciation and openness. It's a beautiful thing when both people are getting something out of the deal. It should not be this thing that you just uh, disrespect and and uh, only go for self. It should be mutual and definitely enjoyable. If you can, uh, I'm I'm exploring, and I don't mind saying this. I'm exploring 
this tantric sex right now, mm -hmm. um, like really, really getting into the depth of sex. Um, again, something that I know we don't talk about a lot, but if you're going to engage in sex, treat it with respect and enjoy it and uh, be sex positive, be sex positive. Eric, your thoughts on sex, man. I love that. I love that, man. Yeah, yeah. Tantric sex. I got to check into that. But uh, yeah, I get my final thoughts are kind of the same things that you said is, you know, let, let's stop making sex be taboo. Let's continue to have these conversations with our children about it. You know, it's a part of life. It was it was created so that we could procreate, but we've gotten to a point where we actually enjoy it as a pastime, if you will. In my 40s, I feel like I, I I enjoy sex more than I ever have. I've always enjoyed it, but I the feeling is like on a three times more than what it used to be. So that's that's great. Maybe that's just because of my experiences, but I thoroughly enjoy it. And I hope that everybody else out there is enjoying it. And um, let's keep having these conversations. This is the Money Sex Gen X episode four. We hope you enjoyed it. We'll see you all back. What'd you say? May 10th? May 10th. May 10th, this show is a wrap. Peace.